before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. This video today is going to be a little bit impromptu. It's going to be a little bit more casual. Um, I'm hoping that I'm not going to have to edit this video. So if it's not as clean cut as my normal videos, that's why. Um, you guys know I've talked about this a lot. It takes it. Editing is like the worst part of this job is editing because it just takes so long long 10 minutes of footage takes about an hour to edit so i'm hoping to be able to like do this video blow my nose if i need to <laughs> you guys know i think you know when i get under the lights my nose starts running it's just, it's these freaking lights but anyway um not important so we got a few things that i want to talk to you guys about today there's a few well, one big scandal that has broken out here in America that I want to get to, that's kind of the main reason why I wanted to film this video, but there's some other things I want to talk about as well. Um, I've gotten this question a lot. I just want to go ahead and cover this first, speaking of editing, about doing lives. Now, I have a few lives that I've done. I'm not opposed to doing lives. However, for me and what I do and my content on this channel, lives are a little bit more difficult for me by myself all right you know other people's their content it's probably easier but because i i do deep dives for the most part i have so i have like a notebook full of information i've got storyboarding notes everywhere reminding me about what direction i want to go with how i deliver the information and so lives when i'm by myself trying to go through the information are difficult because i'm trying to watch the comments while looking down at my notes while also staying on 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 the point of the, the live and so that's why i don't typically do them by myself now lives for a lot of people are a lot easier because they don't require editing so a lot of people prefer a lot of content creators prefer going live because they can just go live put it up and then be done with it um but again that's just not that just doesn't really work unfortunately that doesn't really work for what i do and how i want the information to be presented however however you guys you know that i usually i feel like this works really well because i usually try to to drop deep dives on my channel first and then we go over to shanti on aquarius rising africa we do i do two lives a week with her and we always revisit my deep dives and that is so much easier because i have shanti there to watch the comments and to, and, and it's a different experience, right? Like when I'm doing a deep dive over a subject, I'm giving you my research and my opinion on the research and my speculation about the research. And then when we talk to Shanti on top of my own speculation, we're getting a totally different uh, depth to what we're looking at because she has so much experience now with a lot of whistleblowers. So that is why I don't do many lives again, lives, editing wise they're so much easier and don't take as much time but for me to be able to put out content to the best of my ability um i have to pre-record and edit which does take a while so with that being said what i think i'm going to do moving forward i kind of spoke about this with you guys um off and on this last month is i really want to like when i started this channel i was really big into covering like urban legends and i love that stuff 
Like I freaking love that stuff. So I think I kind of want to go back to what I was originally doing, but also kind of do what I've been doing at the same time. So what I mean by that is I think what I'm going to do going forward is I'm going to do like one big story. Like right now, the story that we're working on is the Borgias, right? That's the big deep dive we're doing. So they'll be like, a video, a deep, big deep dive a week of the Borgias. And then the rest of the week, whatever videos we put up are going to be more like casual, like urban legend types, like what I did in the past. And I'm even considering if you guys want, like one of my favorite series on my channel, one of my favorite playlists is Nefarious New Orleans. And I'm considering going back and re revisiting some of those stories that we covered with New Orleans um, and looking a little bit deeper, especially talking about the Borgias and the Jesuits and all that kind of stuff. And so I just, I know I put up a, a community tab like a while ago asking you guys for urban legends you wanted me to cover. And I'm serious. Like if you guys have any urban, I have a list. I have a list of urban legends that I want to look into. And they're not going to be like the hour or hour or two out hour, hour and a half or two hour deep dives. They're going to be more like 20, 30 minute mini deep dives into these urban legends. And then, so again, with that being said, so moving forward, my plan is to do like one big addition to the deep dives a week and then do like little videos of little mini deep dives for the rest of the week, if that makes sense, um, depending on how I can film. I'm, I'm super busy. I have a very weird schedule. Um, I do this full time and I work full time and I've got a dog and I've got all, you know, so it, sometimes some weeks are going to be less with videos and others just because of what's going on in my schedule or my, my life. Um, and sometimes I'm just in the middle of research. Like sometimes I'm not, I'm working on a project and I'm not, I feel like there's more, like I have this feeling in my gut, like, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll be looking into something and I'll have enough to do a video, but there's something like nagging me that there's more. And so I want to take some time to like, do more research if that makes sense so again i hope that makes sense let me know in the comment section below if there are any urban legends from wherever you live that you want me to cover again please let me know because i love this stuff and i love when i hear from you guys because wherever you're from in the world you might think an urban legend in your neck of the woods is like common knowledge but it might not be to people in other places in the world. And that would be really fun for us to explore together as a community because my opinion is that this stuff doesn't come from nothing. Nothing comes from nothing. Something has to come from something. These, these things come from somewhere. Now, again, with that being said, if there are any old urban legends that I covered years ago, especially when I started my channel, that you want me to go back and revisit, I've done that a few times, like with the Werewolf of Georgia, I revisited that. If there is something you want me to revisit, let me know what story you really like from my past videos and we can go and totally revisit it. Typically when I revisit a story, if it's been a few years since I've covered it, I don't even rewatch the video. I just do a whole new research. I just do a whole new research into it because I know that my perspective has probably changed. And so I'm going to pick up on different things. Yeah. So let me know what you want to hear. And we will talk about it as a game. It'll be fun too, right? Like it's, this stuff's fun. At least it's fun for me. I hope it's fun for you. I don't think you would be here if it wasn't fun for you. Now, um, I want to also talk before we get into the main scandalous mom talk situation. Just some notes, you guys. I want to like remind you guys about fair use. I get this question or this comment quite a lot where people can be pretty abrasive and about this. Like when I do do readings into books, they want me just to read the book. I can't do that legally. Like that's a copyright violation. So fair use is uh, the section 107 of fair use, which is what a lot of people use on YouTube. And that's what I use. So fair use basically means that I can take any copy, any material that has a copyright on it, and I can use it for educational or entertainment purposes. So what that means is I don't have to have permission to use a book or a song or a movie if if I'm giving commentary. Right? If I if I'm reading a book and not giving commentary on the book, then that's a copyright violation. But if I'm reading a book and I'm giving copy and I'm giving commentary, then I'm within fair use. That's like book reviews are in fair use, right? 
So I cannot do that on my channel. I don't want to do that on my channel anyway. There's no point in me. I'm not a voiceover actor. I'm reading when I read books or I look at copyright information with you guys. There's a reason why it's because there's something pertinent in that information that I want to explore with you guys and talk about. And as again, as long as there's commentary, as long as there's you're looking at this from a critical perspective, whether positive or negative, does it matter? You are in within legal fair use and, and YouTube. This is one thing that YouTube does really, really well. YouTube very much takes care of fair use stuff. We're going to get into that a little bit later in the episode, though. I'm going to put a bookmark in that because I'm going to talk more about the Sevilla Code. So just so again, for you guys that have been commenting about my read throughs of books that you you wish I would just shut up and read the book. I can't do that because it's a violation of copyright. So if I were to take like a movie and just download the movie and put it on my channel, that's in violation of copyright. But if I were to take the movie, break it up, pause it, talk about it, that's in fair use. Does that make sense? So if you are somebody that wants to hear these books being read to you that I've covered on my channel, but you don't want to hear my commentary, that's totally fine. What you need to do, though, is go to Audible. So Audible is an app. I use Audible a lot. This is They don't sponsor me, guys. This is not a sponsorship. I use Audible a lot. So you got to go to Audible, get the app. Now, here's the thing. If you want to listen to a book on tape, you're going to have to pay for it. Yeah? YouTube is free. You get to watch me for free. And I think that's the thing. I think you don't want to pay for a book. You just want me just to read it to you for free. If you want to hear the book read to you without any commentary, then you're going to have to pay the $9.99 on Audible to get the book. And usually it's the author reading it or it's a voiceover actor who's been contracted to read it. Now, again, I use Audible a lot, especially in my research. If I've got a ton of, I'm sure whoever is responsible in the government for watching my phone is probably very concerned by the, the books that I have on my on my audible because they're all they're all for research purposes like for stories that i've covered and so if, if i'm covering a story and I, I need to read a book to understand the the depth of the story that i'm covering sometimes what i do is i'll get the book but i'll also get the audible book as well and so like i can kill two birds with one stone so if i'm walking my dog i can listen to the book right while i'm walking my dog and then pick up reading it when i get back or if i'm cleaning the house or something audible's great we use it for road trips too um so yeah you guys I, sorry like I, I can't do that i can't just read you a book that's a violation of copyright but if i give commentary that's in fair use but put again put a bookmark in that because we're going to get back to that with the sophia code let's now talk about the juiciest drama you guys i'm obsessed i am obsessed with this drama and i feel like i'm late to the party like i feel like i'm showing my age even though these girls are only like 10 years younger than me ish ish I feel like I'm truly showing my age because I just found out about this mom talk drama. Apparently this happened like two years ago. And the reason why I found out about this is because there is a new reality show on Hulu called The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. And this is based off of this scandal that happened a couple of years ago on TikTok with it's called Mom Talk, M-O-M because us Americans, we say mom talk like mother, mommy. So these moms were on, they were all Mormons on TikTok. I don't know what the hell is going on in the Mormon world right now, but the Mormons are making headlines through crazy shenanigans. We've had, you know, Ruby Frankie, Lori Vallow. We've had all this stuff, Tim Ballard. Now we've got mom talk. Now the thing about mom talk is that nobody this is not a crime. Like nobody was hurt. I mean, they were emotionally hurt, but nobody was like unalived or, you know, there's no like arrest coming for actually one of the girls got arrested for something else, but we'll get into that. But as far as like the scandal itself, it's just wild to me. So let's talk about it. I'll give you guys a brief, a brief breakdown. Um, again, I'm still getting familiar with all these people as well. Um, but this just opens up, it's Pandora's box, right? It opens up so many more questions and so many more discussions, especially since we've been covering Mormonism on my channel and on Shanti's channel, where we're looking at what Mormonism really is. So mom talk, again, these are young women and they're, most of them are in their 20s. 
their mothers in the Mormon faith. Typically women get married very young. I'm going to give my opinion on that in a minute. And they start to have babies really, really young. That's very typical for the Mormon religion. All right. So this girl named Taylor, she beautiful. All these women are beautiful. A few years ago, she got big on TikTok doing like mom stuff, you know, kind of like family vlogging, but different and a little more sexier, you know, and she got some of her friends, her Mormon mom friends out in Utah, and they kind of joined in and they got really big, right? And they became their own brand. They even have like, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, but I believe they have their own like mom talk house where they film now these TikToks. So they kept, they, they kept, you know, getting more and more and more and more followers, getting brand deals. They were, this is a career, right? They were making money. And then from what I understand, Taylor's husband and Taylor filed for divorce. Now that is not weird in the normal world, but I know that divorce in Mormon land as, as well as other religions can be very um, dicey. So all of a sudden, it, I believe it came out on Reddit that Taylor had had an affair. So Taylor gets on TikTok to set the story straight. Basically, what had happened was they were swinging with each other. Now, she calls it soft swinging, which means that I guess they were doing everything but going all the way I can't you know you guys know I have to watch my words here on YouTube but going like all the way they're doing everything else and it was like I think three other couples involved and she developed feelings for one guy and then another guy developed it was just as she says in the Nick Vile podcast I listened to yesterday I'll tag that down below it got messy and so everything fell apart and she went on TikTok just to clear her name like I'm not the one we were swinging like this was a consensual thing with everyone and now all these women everybody's marriages are falling apart and i'm getting blamed for it so you know she defended herself and if you listen to the nick vile podcast she basically says that she didn't think that she thought maybe a few of her her followers would listen but it anyway it ended up blowing up like it ended up making like headline news which again i don't we don't watch mainstream media so I guess I just missed this. Um, there was a joke made about like making it to CNN. Um, you know, and, and it became the swinging moms of mom talk. And it kind of, at that point, mom talk like fell apart. Right. And this is what the secret lives of Mormon wives, the television reality show is based on. Now, from what I understand, the cast of the reality show, most of them are new girls. They were not a part of the whole swinging thing. Uh, Taylor's the only one that kind of kicks the show off because she's the one that kind of opened up Pandora's box. Now I, when I first started watching this show, first of all, I think Taylor was right. This is just messy. And I think that's why it's like a, a train wreck, right? You just want to stop and look because, and they're all really good looking people and Mormons have this like squeaky clean persona. And the fact that they were doing soft swinging, um, I think it's just rocked everybody's world. Like these women obviously are not as pure as people think they are as Mormons. Now, as the series starts, I was not, I didn't really, I, I saw Taylor as being like immature, the main girl. But over the course of watching this series unfold and then listening to her on the Vile Files, again, that podcast, I will tag it down below. I love Taylor. I have so much empathy for her. I think she is such a cool girl. I think she is really doing the work to, to heal herself. And so I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about this because, you know, for me, as many of you know, I've spent many, many years studying traditional yoga and traditional spirituality. Here's the thing about intimacy, we'll say. Um, the hippity hop that you do with your partner, you know, um, we can't really say the, the graphic words on YouTube. When you are deep, like for me, one of the big red flags of like a cult, a cult leader in spiritual world is if they are doing things like swinging, 
are in like open relationships because anybody who has studied deeply studied sacred scripture and understands like truly understands the energies of the body they're not going to have open relationships and they're going to be very careful about who they share that intimacy with so what do i mean by this so we have karma which is cause and effect it's work it's energy when you are in the hippity hop with another human being where you're the most vulnerable you can be right that's a very vulnerable place to be in the hippity hop if with the right person where you're energetically matched with and emotionally matched with it could be a very powerful and beautiful experience because it's total honesty and total truth right you're literally naked yeah the naked truth if you are doing that with multiple people like in an open relationship or if you're swinging as taylor kept saying it gets messy because it's not just physical it's energetic too it's not just mental emotional physical it's also energetic bodies yeah so energetically you are now sharing karma with multiple people and not only that but your partner if your hippity hop partner your husband your wife whatever if they're also doing it too and then you come back together in the hippity hop he's bringing his that extra chaos and you're bringing your extra chaos and so it becomes i mean it's not good right it's not it becomes as taylor kept saying messy so if you are studying spirituality and you're with the teacher and you notice, notice that the teacher is hippity hopping in with a bunch of different people i my advice would be to find another teacher because anybody that truly truly understands energetic body and truly understands your chakras and truly understands kundalini will never be in an open relationship it's dangerous all right with that being said i don't really judge people who do that because that's your choice but like for me that's a no-go we also know from energetic body that once you end a relationship if you end a relationship where you are hippity hopping you need to take at least three to six months of celibacy because you need to recorrect and cleanse your energy before you hippity hop with somebody else does that make sense i'm trying i wish i could speak the real words but alas here we are so th this is why in most situations where you see people swinging or in open relationships it doesn't work it doesn't work that they say it's jealousy it's this and jealousy could play a part of it of course but it's also something bigger there's something bigger happening with the energetic bodies and the energetic body fields yeah and i think that's what happened when they were doing this now taylor in her interview with nick vile again i freaking my heart bled for her i have so much empathy when we look at the mormon church especially and this is true for a lot of super conservative religions very fundamentalist religions first of all there's not a lot of consideration with women when it comes to the hippity hop they're not taught things it's all about the man and for women biological women in the hippity hop you are the one that whose body is really being used and if you're you trust your partner then that's a beautiful thing yeah I, again i'm trying to be careful about you know what i'm saying like you know you're sharing your body and so that can feel very violating even when you're with somebody that you love and trust there can be times where you as as a human being as a woman and a human being just feel kind of closed off and and that is interrupting an emotional cycle that you're in and that's why you know really healthy relationships if the man wants to hippity hop and the woman is not feeling okay about that the man is totally cool with it because she is the one that's really she's the mvp let's just face it or if you're in a gay relationship and you're the one that you know i don't want to get too graphic but the one that takes it basically is the mvp yeah so i mean because the body's the portal a woman's body is a portal you know 
So we have these women in these, not just Mormonism, but in these fundamentalist groups that first of all, aren't really taught about their bodies and they're not made to feel that they actually have a role in the hippity hop. And so it's pretty degrading. Yeah. And I grew up, I mean, my, my family's not super conservative when it comes to that, but I did grow up in like, you know, I was at the tail end of purity culture. So, you know, it's damaging. It's very damaging. If a woman's purity and her value is dependent upon you know, the door to the hippity hop being clean, then that can cause a lot of psychological stuff and trauma. I think a lot of women have trauma around this, especially if they're raised, again, in conservative religious households. I think that a lot of women have unspoken trauma, trauma they don't even know they have, regarding their own identity outside of being a wife or a partner, you know? And, you know, you go all your whole life being told by your church leaders and your parents that as a woman that your value is you being pure, but then you get married and you're supposed to just be submissive and be in service. So there's a step missing. There's a step missing. We also, again, have this idea where in Mormonism where it's really common for women and men to get married super young. And my opinion is that no one should be getting married until they've had their first Saturn return, which is at the end of their 20s. So I think late 20s, early 30s is a pretty good age to commit like that. Um, nonetheless, there are plenty of relationships that have started as when people were really young and they got married young and they're absolutely healthy and fine, right? So this is not the end all be all. This is just generally speaking. Because um, you, when you're 20, you're a very different person from 20 to like, say, 32, 33, 34, 35. Thank God, too. Thank God. You know, your, your frontal lobe isn't even finished developing until you're 25. And so when you're 20, 21, and you're having babies, you are literally babies having babies. And I do think because of that, we see a lot of arrested development. You need to have times in your life where you are messy, because that's how you learn, right? Um, so we know that they are not educated when it comes to the hippie, hippity hop. We know that they're expected to be of service to their husbands who are also not educated in the hippity hop. We know that, um, they're in this very young age group where their frontal lobes are not even developed, but yet they're taking on the responsibility of a full, full adult with children, all that stuff. And so it's bound to no, not many relationships, not many healthy relationships, can survive that chaos of swinging much less a relationship that's so childlike yeah so in this episode it kind of said i'm kind of paraphrasing what taylor was saying what i what i heard her saying when all of this started it seems like she was not really interested in her husband anyway that their their relationship had kind of run its course and because they were Mormon, and again, this is probably resonates with a lot of very conservative religions because you are in a conservative religion, divorce sometimes is not an option. Yeah. So people will scream for an out without actually taking the out. So bringing other people into the relationship, in my opinion, for most situations is definitely opening a door. For someone to get out it's allowing pain to come into the even more pain to come into the relationship so it has no choice but to crumble and i don't know why we do this as human beings but we do do this this is very common patterning for humans why maybe it's our fear of the unknown where we'll be stuck in a situation a job anything that's absolutely toxic for us with that being said, that doesn't mean the other person is toxic. It's just not a vibrational match anymore, right? It could be the other person is toxic, absolutely. But most of the time, it's not It's not anyone's fault. It's just not a vibrational match. But we have people, just human beings all over the world who are in situations that are not serving them. I've done this. I mean, we've all done this. And instead of just being healthy and leaving the situation and taking a step into the unknown, 
we invite more pain and suffering into the situation. So eventually at some point we have no choice but to leave the situation. I again, I don't know why we do this. I'm sure many psychiatrists have theories on why we do this. You know, maybe sometimes in situations that are painful for us, that are toxic for us, maybe sometimes we've numbed ourselves so much that we invite subconsciously invite more suffering just to feel again, right? Just to feel the reality, you know? And so Taylor kind of talks about that, that her mayor, they had like two children, I think two children already. Um, so she's a mom, obviously mom talk. She's got this business. Uh, her, her business partners are her friends, her girlfriends. And now they're swapping husbands. And, I think they, again, they justified it because they never went the whole way. But regardless of whether you're going the whole way or you're doing other things that are intimate, you're still in that karmic cycle of sharing karmic energy. Hope that makes sense. Let me know if that doesn't make sense. Maybe we can put a full video on Rumble if this doesn't make sense and I can explain it deeper. You know, so... And I do think, too, you know, for me personally, as a woman, absolutely, I can see an attractive man and know he's attractive. That doesn't mean that I want to hippity hop with him. As a woman, for me, and especially the deeper I go into my spirituality and my practices, there has to be an emotional connection, an energetic connection, a mental connection with that man before I'll ever share karma with him. It's so much deeper than just bodily functions. And I think when we're young and when we're super fertile too, when we're young, we ride the hormones more than the logic. And so for a lot of people, you know, a lot of what these people were doing to a lesser extent, people do when they're in college or in their early twenties before they're married with kids. And they kind of get it out of their systems. And they learn from those mistakes. They learn from the mistakes of bed hopping. That they might not understand that the chaos that's coming from that is the energies, the energetic karmic storm, messy storm, as Taylor says. But they understand that it's not something they want. You know, all the men that I know in the traditional yoga world are very committed to their partners. And they're, they don't bed hop at all i know people in the traditional i don't do this this is this is like this is serious there are people in the traditional yoga world not only do they not bed hop but they follow the moon cycle about when they should hippity hop with their partner so i don't do that but they literally won't hippity hop on certain days depending on the cycle of the moon to match the energy I mean, that's a little too much for me. I'm a little too busy to track that. <laughs> I, I got enough track, tracking my own cycle. But they literally look at that for, with their partner. So, you know, they, they don't hippity hop unless like the moon is at a particular place, right? So they're even stricter on that. And this acting out, though, I think that was a cry for help. I, I think that once the divorce started, as Taylor said, if, if the rumor, if she had not been scapegoated, the one scapegoated for all these marriages falling apart, she probably would never said anything on TikTok about what was actually going on behind the scenes. And I understand that. And, and Nick Vile, who, if you guys don't know who he is, he was a bachelor. So he's been in reality TV and he does talk about that. Like when you have a public platform, sometimes it's best just not to say anything um, and just let people gossip. But I can understand why she felt the need to say something. Because it wasn't fair. And that's what I see from Taylor a lot. Like in this show, Taylor is probably the most vulnerable, the most genuine, the most open, but yet she's also the one who's scapegoated, it, it, as it appears to me. She's the one that gets scapegoated. And I think I feel, a, even though I've never been a swinger and I've never done what she's done ever, I, I can feel a commonality with her because I get scapegoated a lot. Ever since I was a child, I get scapegoated. And so I, I think when you're the one that's honest and you're the one that is willing to talk about hard things and be vulnerable and ask the hard questions, you're often going to be the one that's blamed for the emotions that come up with 
those questions. And, you know, Taylor, she talks a lot about the Mormon church. Now, you guys know, I don't, I think the Mormon religion is bunk. I, I think, I, I think Joseph Smith was a con man. Um, however, I really like Mormons. I, I, I tend to tend to like Mormons. They seem to be very, for the most part, very nice people. Um, and we know that the Christian church, Christianity in general is bunk. If you've been on this channel for a while, it's not the, 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 the religion that Yeshua or the spirituality that Yeshua taught. But nonetheless, we also know that church is got its own etymology. That's a story for a different day. Watch my other videos for that. You know, so we know that in most churches, they're not looking for sinners. They're not looking for people who want to fix themselves. They're looking for the most evil, the most narcissistic, right? But Taylor does make a point in one of the videos or one of the episodes. She says, I, I think church should be for those of us who are broken and those of us who need help. And I thought that that was so beautiful of her being willing to like say that that she's broken and that she wants to heal. She wants to heal herself and she's being honest. The other women tend to kind of show this facade of being perfect and the tee hee hee, the sins that they, that they commit, which really what, like drinking coffee, like it's really not, not that big of a deal. They're not really super honest in my opinion about what's really going on in their heart, in their soul, in their being. But Taylor is, she's willing to let it all, to be completely vulnerable. And I can respect that about, because she's doing it on national TV. Times in my life where I've had to go through the dark night of the soul, I've been in the privacy of my own home. She's doing it on national TV. And when I was listening to her talk about, go deeper into it, with, I actually was out walking my dog and I got emotional. Like at one point, you know, you can hear people like cry and you can tell, like I'm looking at you, Gypsy Rose, when it's a fake cry and it's just cringy and it's awful. But when people genuinely, like when it's a real emotion and they literally can't hold that, that, that pain in anymore, there's a, there's this time in the podcast where she's talking about this and she gets so emo she starts to get emotional when she talks about her her part in hurting other people which was big of her to say that because everybody was involved in the situation they all were doing it everybody was hurting everybody but for her not to say well we were all doing it for her to say, no, I'm going to take accountability like for my part. And I hurt other people. And she got emotional talking about how she has not been able to forgive herself for hurting other people. That's empathy. That's someone who is not a psychopath. That's someone who's genuine. Now, the first episode of The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives, it's like the first episode, they talk about the scandal. And then it's like, almost a year later from, from the second episode, because at the end of the first episode, Taylor does get arrested and she talks about this and she, and this is when she just breaks down and I'm paraphrasing guys, please go back and listen to her podcast, watch the show. So you kind of know what's going on. She was like two months out of her divorce from the whole swinging scandal where she met this other guy named Dakota. I don't really have an opinion on Dakota. Some people do. He's in the show. And this is why I say when, when you leave a relationship where you've had the hippity hoppity, you need some time to be on your own and be celibate because you gotta, you gotta clear that karma, right? You gotta, you gotta rebalance your own energy after, cause you're, you're carrying the karma of somebody else, especially if you've been swinging around, you're carrying the karma of so many people, your energetic body is so out of whack. So you need that time to not only clear everybody else's karma, but then rebalance yourself as well before you invite somebody else into this type of relationship. So two months, that's not enough time. And I think she kind of alludes to that because her life started to really kind of mentally and emotionally fall apart. Um, and I think just the pressure of, of, I mean, her platform is way bigger than mine and I feel it. So I can't imagine like what she was feeling when she was going through the heat of this. You know, and when they first started dating, they weren't exclusive, blah, blah, blah. This is why I don't think you should be hippity hopping until you have that conversation of exclusivity, just because, again, chaos, energetic body chaos. Um, and there were some gray, murky areas with Dakota. She ends up, 
she had like two pregnancies that she lost. One was ectopic and the other was uh, just a miscarriage. And that can chemically and hormonally and emotionally hurt you. She's already got kids. So there was a night where, um, and this was kind of funny. She, she does talk about this. They, she, they gone to a party where it was dressed like your ex. So she was kind of dressed like a dude. And she had, she had, she had drawn kind of a beard on her face. And I guess she got really drunk. She was already in a bad state and they got into a huge fight where a chair was thrown. So the stuff, stuff happened. She ended up being arrested for domestic violence. And that kind of, I think was her, that was kind of her, her catalyst to realize I need help. I'm not okay. Going to church is not cutting it. Like I need, I am broken. I am emotional. I don't know who I am. And she even said that, like, I don't even know who I am. Like, I don't even know who Taylor is. And so her arrest, even though it was stressful for her, um, ended up probably be, I think she'll look back on her life and she'll think it was probably a pretty good thing that happened. But she's funny because she's talking about how she was dressed like a man when she got it. And she, her mugshot, she's got like, so she kind of, she kind of make, made a joke like halfway through this very emotional point, which I thought you can make a joke in the middle of talking about one of the worst nights of your life. Then you're pretty, you're pretty cool if you can do that. So anyway, she ended up getting pregnant again. She has a son with Dakota now. And she, she ta did ta talk about like when she was going through her divorce and going through the aftermath of like the swinging situation. She was grateful that her ex-husband, they have a great relationship now could take the kids because she said she knew as a mother that she didn't even want to be around her kids. And she goes, as now as a mom, I crave my children. I always want to be with my children. But at that point, I look back and I knew something was wrong because it's like I did I wanted to push my children away because I wasn't safe around them. And I just, I, you know, again, I'm going to reiterate, when I first started watching this show, I did not like Taylor. I thought she was very immature from the first episode. What I think I was seeing was her being very nervous. Um, and it kind of maybe came across as immaturity, but it was probably her being pretty nervous about being on national TV and talking about this very embarrassing part of her life, right? And having to be very honest. You know, one thing about her, one thing I like about her, one thing that makes her such an alluring human being and such a relatable human being is that she's so open about her faults. And I like her because of her faults. I like her because she can say, sit here and say, I fucked up. And I did these really bad, and I'm and I'm really sorry. And I, I will spend the rest of my life feeling that I need to repay this. And the fact that she can actually sit there and just be at rock bottom and and own it is so relatable. She's so human, and that makes her freaking gorgeous. I'm gonna pull up, I'm gonna share a screen quickly so you guys can kind of see some of the, she's like 28 now, so she's super young. Like this happened, like when, um, this is her right here. That, that's her, beautiful girl. This happened like in 2022, so she was like 25, 26, but she was young when this happened. Um, and so, and, it, and again, it brings up so much, it brings so, this, this, this show, as far as human psychology, brings a lot to the table. Because yes, you can see it, say it's like a trashy reality show, whatever. And you guys know I love my trashy reality shows. But it's also kind of a look, as most reality shows are, it's a look at human psychology. And even though these girls are Mormons, again, this is no different than any other high-controlled conservative religion. And there's something so utterly human about it. And, you know, they, they say they're fighting the patriarchy because Mormonism is a very patriarchal society. I, I'm not against, I'm honestly, even though I'm, I might get pushed back for saying this. I'm not totally against the patriarch. I'm not against the matriarch either. For some people, it works. Um, it gets into these. So this is Jen Affleck and Zach Affleck. Um, I think he's Ben Affleck's like second cousin or something. They, this is a very, in my opinion, very toxic rela relationship. He is very dominating over her. I personally see it as being abusive. That's my personal opinion. But because a lot of high controlled conservative religions women are supposed to be subservient to their husbands i i don't think she would see it that way i would and i think that's what festers and what grows these type of of toxic relationships is when women don't feel like they have the right to push back um 
So anyway, I would love to hear y'all's opinions on this. I did send it over the information over to Shanti because I know her and Jesse's abode are going deep into like the conspiracies and the occultism in the Mormon church. And I, I don't think any of these girls, you know, from my, my gut, I don't think these girls are like high up in, into any occultism. And I think they're just Mormon moms who got big on TikTok and this happened, you know, but I really like Taylor. I hope that she knows that I think what she's doing, I think what a lot of women are now relate, relating to Taylor. I, you know, I would have never done what she did. That's not something I would have ever done, but that doesn't mean that I haven't fucked up too in my life badly. Right. And so I really respect her and um, venerate her and honor her for doing what she's doing and being so brave about it. And I think that I can't wait to see what she's like 10 years from now the wisdom that she has and the wisdom that she's created and the life that she's created for herself. I highly doubt she'll ever be swinging again. I think she learned her lesson the first time. So anyway, guys, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the Sophia code. I've got a list here. So this kind of goes back to fair use. Um, what we were talking about before we got into mom talk and I had an issue. So you guys know I supported the Sophia code hardcore for years. We went through the whole book. I talked about it on other channels. The book really, uh, really affected me. It's right here, the Sophia Code. Um, but when I go through these books, I, again, I don't read them straight out. Again, I give my commentary. I don't, you know, I'm in fair use. This is perfectly legal for me to do. I also I always encourage people to get the book for themselves. I mean, with the Sophia Code, you guys let me know because you, if you were around for that, I probably generated a lot of sales for them. And I'm not, I'm not sponsored by the Sophia code. This is just something I did and I enjoyed the book. And so I shared it with you guys and you guys got it for yourselves. I always encourage that and you get your own material so that you can have it for yourself. So you're not just relying on me. You know, I promote freedom, you know, not non-censorship. Listen to me, but make your own opinions. So I dealt with an issue with the Sophia code where I, um, I got struck by them. They tried to take my channel down because I read the book even though I was in fair use. Now, again, this is one thing that YouTube is really good about. I, I have to give YouTube props for this. If you are within fair use and the, the person tries to take your work away from you when you are within your legal rights, YouTube will resolve it really quickly and usually will come down on the other person. There are many people, If you there's Reddit, Reddit threads out there where many people have done copyright strikes on people and the, the people were within the people they struck were within fair use. And YouTube went around, turned around and took their channel down because they tried to hurt somebody else. And it's usually, usually it happens when a person's looking at a material and criticizing it. I don't really criticize the Sophia Code. You know, I, even with the Tom Kenyon books, I, I, there are some things I don't agree with with Tom Kenya, but for the most part, I, I like his work. And that's why I share with you guys. I feel like I'm pretty good, though, about like having discernment and being able to see the complexities. And I don't have to agree with everything someone says. We also know that with the Sophia Code, I want to remind you guys, Kaya Ra did not come up with the Sophia Code. I thought this was common knowledge, but I guess it's not. The Sophia Code is spoken about in the missing books of the Bible. This is a this concept of Sophia it has been around for thousands of years. Okay. Now the stories of the women in the Sophia code, the, the, the females, uh, Magdalene, Kuan Yin, Mother Mary, Isis, Hathor, a uh, white Buffalo woman. Um, I think I'm missing someone. You guys know what I'm talking about. All those women, they, they've been around for thousands. This is somebody's. you can't copyright somebody's life story. Like these have been around for forever. All Kyra did was channel the book. But the stories were already out there, right? Now, she has the copyright on her particular book, but she doesn't own the the, the term Sophia Code or the names of these Ascended Masters. That, that's ridiculous. That would be like me trying to copyright the name Abraham Lincoln. It's ridiculous. You can't do it. Those courts won't even allow that anyway, you know? Um, so I dealt with that. I got a massive apology from them. But what happened... Because of that situation, of course, I had a horrible taste in my mouth, um, is that I went and started looking up Kyra. And I probably should have done this before I promoted the, the Sophia Code. So for that, I apologize. However, in saying that, I will, it's not an excuse, but I will say when I read books, I'm not super interested most of the time in the author anyway. 
I'm more interested in what the material is saying. So I didn't really feel the need to look at the Kaira because I was more interested in the book. Yeah. Because the teaching is beautiful. It doesn't mean that the person is perfect. I really like Tom Kenyon. And I feel like I've gotten to know a little bit about, a little bit about Tom Kenyon because in his books, he does reference his life. But I'm not super interested in like having a friendship with Tom Kenyon or, you know, I, I'm just, I like his books. And I, I'm like that way with artists as well, like celebrities. Like you guys know my, uh, I did a TikTok of this, my, the, the guy who does the music for my channel, a friend of mine named Josh McKay. He is um, a pretty big deal in the music industry. He was a deer hunter. He was an Alex Attic. He lives here in Athens. He knows Michael Stite from the art, you know, they, he kind of hangs out with like the REM group. Um, and I've never once been interested in like meeting these people. I love REM. I think REM's got great music, but I'm not super interested in meeting the artist. I can respect the artist's work. So that's just kind of how I am as a person. So um, I never really expected to need to know much about Kaya Roth. I was just interested in her work, in the book. That was it. And applying it in my own perspective, in my own life, with my own teachings that I've learned in India. But when this happened, it pushed me and I was dealing with the legal side of YouTube and, you know, the legality, because this is a legal issue. My boyfriend and I started doing digging into Kaya Ra. And there is a lot of allegations out there. Now, these are just allegations. Everybody is innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. So please take all of this with a grain of salt. But there are allegations out there that she is running a cult. And there are some pretty horrific stories. Again, this is all allegedly. This is all allegations. This is not fact. Um, some of the most common stories that I read from people who were a part of her organization was that if she, if you weren't doing what she wanted you to do, she'll like manipulate and start channeling one of the uh, ascended masters from the book to get you to do what she wants you to do through channeling them, like using them as the mouthpiece to get you to do what you want. Um, a lot of uh, common allegations are that she wants you to leave your husband if you're married. Um, I'm very concerned. Uh, you know, wealth, wealth is not, uh, my teacher's wealthy. My teacher's one of the wealthiest men in South India. That's not, wealth has, you can be spiritual and be wealthy. That's not, but from what I've seen from my own, we're looking into her, looking at her Instagram, it seems that there's a, um, a love of material possessions. And that's strange to me. Because like I was talking about the intimacy intimacy thing with spirituality, same with material possessions. Like my teacher in India, he is the wealthiest man in South India. However, he rotates between the same two Nike shorts. He is so cheap. But it's not that he's cheap. It's that he doesn't prioritize his sense of self on material possess possessions. And I find like the more, the deeper I get into my own practice, like I've been honest, I've told you guys before, like I've never really wanted a house. Even that was never a goal of mine was to have a house. Now, if I, if we moved into a house now, I would love it because we have a yard for our dog, but I've always liked living in smaller areas. I like cities. I like being in the middle of the city and just being able to walk out my door and go to a coffee shop or go to a bar, or go to the, you know, I, there's, there's value for me. There's value living in a small place in the middle of the city. I probably play, probably pay more for my rent here than most people do for their mortgages. However, I am a minimalist. Um, and I, the deeper I got into my practice over the 18 years of doing a spiritual practice, the more of a minimalist I become. I don't want to own a lot of stuff. My car has like 200,000 miles on it. I'm going to, it's all paid off. I'm going to drive that sucker until I can't drive it anymore. I'm not interested in a fancy car. I'm not interested. That, that's not interesting to me. I'm not interested in fancy clothes. I like clothes. I like feeling good in my clothes, but I'm not interested in having like a wardrobe full. I might have a couple of nice pieces. I actually do have a couple of nice pieces for when I have to go to the country club with my parents or something. You know, like I have, but I'm, I'm more interested in, hanging out with you guys, studying spirituality, 
looking at the patterns of the world, traveling. That's where most of my money goes is traveling. And so with her, though, I see a lot. There's a lot of emphasis on material possessions. There's also from what I, and this is just my opinion. This isn't fact. This is my opinion. There's also it seems to be a lot of emphasis on beauty. And she's beautiful. Don't, Kaya Ra is a gorgeous woman. And, you know, like I've got makeup on right now because I'm filming with you guys. But I don't have makeup on when I'm teaching in a shala. I don't feel the need to emphasize my physical features when I'm teaching. I always laugh because I, I shave my legs every single day. And I started doing that years ago because of the spandex and wearing spandex and it just felt cleaner, more hygienically cleaner to me. Um, and so now I'm in the habit. I can't stand prickly. So I shave my legs every day. Um, and now I'd laugh with my students because there's a lot of adjustments where I have them grab my legs, especially like in backbending. And I always laugh that I shave my legs for them, you know, but that's just, so that's just my preference. It's not about anybody thinking, I, I don't care if my students think I'm pretty or not. You know, that's not, I'm, I'm more interested in teaching the subject at hand, you know, where for her, it seems like, it's a validation thing. Like she wears a lot of makeup. And again, I've got a lot of makeup on right now because I'm filming. But I don't typically don't during the day when I'm not or if I'm teaching. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not trying to judge too harshly because I know a lot of women have this insecurity and they feel like they need to paint themselves every day to feel. And that's, if that's what you want to do to express yourself, awesome. But it doesn't feel genuine with her. I pick up the energy that she's jealous of other women, you know, and that's, what's crazy too. My boyfriend and I were talking about this. Like there's so many women out there. I don't know why I'm whispering. <laughs> I feel like we're having a, a private conversation. There are so many women out there, especially in the spiritual world that claim to be pro women, like pro women's health, pro women's choice, pro, 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 you know, women supporting women. But typically, in my experience, women who are like that, who portray themselves to be that way, are the most intimidated and jealous by other women. Like, I'm pro-women, but I'm also pro-men, too. Like, I don't care if you're a man or you, both are welcome in my class. Like, I'm not, I don't give a shit what your gender is, what your race is, what your sexuality is. I don't, I'm more interested in you and helping you, regardless of who you are. So sometimes I wonder, because she's very pro, pro women, she kind of has that air about her. I wonder if in all the makeup she wears, if it's, if she's one of those women that, because I even said that to her assistant. I was like, when I was talking off, trying to s sort this out with her like assistant, I was like, you guys claim to be pro women. And I have a big plat. My platform is bigger than hers. My platform is bigger than hers. I have a bigger platform where I have introduced, as a woman, I have introduced your book to thousands of people all over the world. And you claim to be pro-women. So here I am, genuinely supporting you. I don't care that you're a woman. I just like your book. But I'm genuinely supporting you. I'm not making really money off of you. I'm, I'm genuinely telling people I like this book. But yet you attack me and try to get my work taken down when I'm a woman. I'm, I'm the only, and I said this to the assistant, I was like, I'm the only female in the state of effing Georgia to have an authorization to teach traditional yoga. You would think that if Kaya Ra was so raw, raw women, that she would be flattered. That someone with my educational level was promoting her book. Another woman with my education who had broken a boundary, a limitation, and gotten this authorization and, been the, and still the only woman in Georgia to hold this authorization. You'd think that Kaya Ra, who's cheering for women, would be absolutely ecstatic that I was promoting her book. But no, 
she tried to get me out of the picture. And my boyfriend went back and looked at her YouTube channel and he realized, he went back and looked at my YouTube channel and he realized that there were some commentary, some commentary that I was giving on the Sophia code on these videos that were filmed well in advance and that she, now she has videos on her channel basically mimicking things that I said long before in my commentary that were my own words and that she's creating courses around my own teaching and trying to sell these courses. So he thinks that's why she tried to take me out. But nonetheless, so as I stand, I'm not going to get too much into that now because I am considering, I am considering doing a deep dive into Kaya Ra. Um, I now personally do not believe personally, my own opinion, no truth here, just my opinion, that she was not a victim, the victim that she claims to be of the Aluma Shmati, like she does in her first, I don't think, I, I don't think she was at this point. I did when I first read the book, I took her at, at face value. I don't think so now. After all the read, I think that this is a story she concocted in order to um, sell her narrative. But the thing is, if your teaching is in alignment with the divine and if your teaching is integral, you don't, you don't need to worry about your story. Your story doesn't really matter. Yeah. I doubt my students really care about my story. What matters is the teaching. So again, I'm bringing this up. I still love the Sophia code and I'm so happy that so many people were positively impacted by the Sophia code. Please do your own research into this. Don't take my opinion as fact. These are all allegations. Nothing has come to court yet, but there were enough allegations saying the same thing. And the allegations in my opinion were pretty serious that I felt like I needed to address this. I am considering doing a deep dive into her and just bringing up all of the allegations just to be fair to everybody because I brought this onto my channel. But in saying that, I do encourage you to never lionize a teacher, never lionize an author, never lionize a politician, never lionize a YouTuber. You can respect, you know, there's a difference between respecting a teacher. Like in my Mysore room, when I'm teaching, I command respect because I know what I'm doing. I've got 18 years of experience. My job is to give you tough love. And my job is to help you. But once I leave that Mysore room, once class is over, we're just two human beings. And I don't, you, you do you, boo. You, I mean, I don't bring politics into the Mysore room. I don't bring sometimes religion because we're, we're dealing with spirituality. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I'm not going to tell you what to eat. If you want me to go over the dosha system, system with you, I will. But that's not, my expertise is traditional yoga. So I guess with Kaya Ra, again, I guess what I'm trying to say is when you move forward into spiritual work, look for the teaching, not the person. Now you want a teacher you feel comfortable with, right? You don't want, if you don't feel comfortable with the teacher, that's probably not the teacher for you or a Reiki healer, whatever it is. But you're, you are looking for the work yourself. I don't lionize my teacher in India. I don't, I respect him. I quote him a lot because he has a lot of really great information and he's very wise. And so I'll quote his conferences a lot. And I, I, I give him, he is above me when it comes to knowledge. But only when it comes to knowledge, not as human beings. He's a human being, I'm a human being. Yeah. So if you are with a healer or a teacher who's telling you to divorce your husband, in my opinion, I would say that's a huge red flag. Especially if there's not really big issues in your marriage. If you are in a situation where somebody is trying to coerce you into doing something and they're manipulating the teaching, as far as like channeling somebody, just be careful. You know, my students will text me here and, and there, like, especially if they're like going to be late to a class or if they have a question about something they're confused about from the practice, they'll like, and I'll text them out and I'll answer their questions. But I'm not texting my students on a daily basis trying to get their attention. No. My teacher doesn't do that to me. 
I just want to use this as a cautionary tale. If you guys have more questions about that, we can go into it deeper. But please, any any work that is presented to you, um, any shadow work courses, because we are talking about potentially doing another shadow work challenge. It's about you and the work. I create the shadow work challenges. We did the 60 day, we did the 30. I created them, but it's about you. I used my education to create those, but it's about you doing the work. Um, another example, like for me, I, I, I take this very seriously. Like I, if you guys, most of you know, we have an Esoteric Atlanta shadow work group on Signal. Awesome group. I love the people. And I'll read the comments sometimes, but I'm, I intentionally, I know I've got great moderators in there. Awesome people in this group. It's a very private group of people who met through through the shadow works on, on um, Esoteric Atlanta a couple of years ago. And we formed this private group for people around the world to support each other and to help each other. And um, and so if you guys want to join that, it's it's Esoteric Atlanta EA Shadow Work Group. It's on the Signal app and it's private. It's a private group. So you have to request to be let in. Um, and I, you know, for me, even though it's Esoteric Atlanta, I only gave it the name Esoteric Atlanta Shadow Work Group because the, the, the challenges came from my channel from Esoteric Atlanta. But it's not, even though I created the group and I got the moderators, I don't consider it my group. And I know you guys who are in that group probably notice I'm not in there much. I read, sometimes I'll go back and read the comments, but I'm not in there much. And I do that intentionally. I do that intentionally because I want everybody to have a place in that group. And I don't want it there. I mean, we have moderators for a reason because we don't want any trolls or any spam in there. So we have to have people that can like remove stuff or approve stuff, but I'm not in there intentionally a lot. I go there sometimes from time to time and have conversations, but a lot, I, I, I kind of pull back a lot because I want the people in that group to not rely on me being in there. Like I want it to be everybody's group. I want it to be everybody's group, not just mine. And I'm, I'm very careful with that because I've been in spirituality for a long time. And I know how quickly that can be manipulated. And I don't want any part of that. I want every single person is a valuable human being. And that's that. So I hope that makes sense. Anyway. All right. Before we sign off, I just want to remind you guys of one more thing. Um, and this is why there might not be a lot of videos this week. I've got a, again, I got a couple of deep dives that I'm working on right now. Um, but we're also gearing up for our, uh, as our Gnostic TV uh, panel, Tales from the Dark Side, which is going to be the 28th and the 29th. So next week, not this upcoming weekend, but the next weekend. And so that's why that's been taking a lot of time from Shanti and me to do. So um, down in the description box below, you can get tickets to that event. It's a bunch of people who've been in the occult. Um, and so we are gearing up to that. So that might be why there's not a lot of videos, um, as well. So anyway, you guys, I, let me go back and look here. I believe I will be, so tomorrow at noon, I'll be back with Shanti on, uh, either Aquarius Rising Africa or Solutions with Shanti and then 9 a.m. Uh, I'll, I'll be filming at 9 a.m. on Thursday the 19th over with Catherine that will air on Catherine's channel. We pre-record. So at some point we'll be, we'll be, uh, releasing that now we are also working on an o negative show that should be coming in the future on gnostic because we're going to get to some deep deep stuff with that that will be coming we got to get through this panel first and i'm also considering doing a um, course on the um alchemy of movement the workshop that i just taught here in atlanta online as well and i'm i'm, I'm playing with that so anyway you guys yeah the last installment of the Pesor family should be coming up at some point. I'm still finishing. We're at Lewis Cass Pesor, which is a big one. So um, I'm still working on that. And um, yeah, you guys. So anyway, let me know your urban legends. What urban legends do you want me to cover? What do you think about mom talk? All that kind of stuff, guys. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. Oh, oh, oh. Speaking of mom talk, join me on TikTok. Join me on the TikTok. I'm on TikTok at Esoteric Atlanta. If I get up to 1,000 subs, which I know I can do because I got like 54,000 of you here. If I get up to 1,000 subs on TikTok, we can go live on TikTok. And why is that exciting? That's a live show I would definitely do because apparently, from what I understand on the TikTok, if you're live, your followers can hop up with you and join the live with you. So that would be super fun, like to do deep dives on my channel and then like do a live on TikTok where you guys can like, actually like jump in the box with me and talk about your perception of, of the, whatever we're talking about. So join me on TikTok. Esoteric. I haven't connected my YouTube channel to my TikTok yet. I just got to do that. That's just admin work I haven't had a chance to do. But if you find me, it's Esoteric Atlanta. You'll see it there. 
follow away so we can get to that thousand sub mark so we can have some fun on TikTok. So, all right, you guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will talk to you soon.